everybody, it's Emily and today we're going to be going over some of my favorite watercolor supplies. If you have been on my channel for any time, you probably know that I really love watercolor. I don't know what to do with my hands. Not sure what to do with my hands. But I'm gonna do something. I want you guys to like the uh, review that I did and I want to thank you all for all your support and kind words and liking and commenting. I can't believe I got over 3,000 views on that. I'm just like blown away. That's so early in my channel career that I've gotten that many views on video. So thank you everybody for supporting. And yeah, so first I'm going to go over all of the watercolor supplies that I personally like the most. And then I'm going to go over the ones that I recommend for beginners, which I think would be really helpful. Yeah, let's get started. <coughs> Sorry, I'm starting to get a little bit sick right now, but carry on, artists, we never stop. So first, this is what I used for the longest time. It's the Artist Loft watercolor pad. And it's been really good. You see, I've done some swatches of some watercolor sets here. And I really like this paper. It's not too expensive and it comes in pads so you can actually get stuff done. Oh, super depressing Dr. Who fever. <laughs> forgot I did that in here. So yeah, this is what I used for the longest time and I think it's a really good brand and it's actually at artist level according to them, which is pretty rad. And I really like this. It holds up really well. It doesn't warp that much. It still warps a little bit. Basically every single watercolor paper is gonna warp a little bit. This doesn't warp as much as normal paper, which is what a lot of people like to start out on, which I do not recommend at all. You want real watercolor paper that's built to handle water. And recently I have gotten into using the Canson watercolor paper. This is their cold press, 140 pound. And it's, a, I think it's a little bit thicker than the Artist Loft. It withstands a lot of water and I really like this brand because the sheets come in so big. This is the whole pad and it's about half an inch thick of just watercolor paper. And this other one, Artist Loft one, was originally only this thick so you can see how much bang for your buck you get with the second one. Also I got the Canson watercolor paper on sale so it was buy one get one free which is always nice. <laughs> Watercolor paper. The next thing I have is a watercolor sketchbook, but I haven't really used it that much because I haven't really had time to watercolor in a sketchbook. It is by Moleskin. I can't remember how big it is, but let's find out. Eight by 12-ish. Yeah, it's a nice size. You open it up as things in case of loss, return to, and as a reward, expecting people to want a reward. And as you can see, I've already done some swatches, comparing some watercolor brands. Maybe I'll do a comparison video. If you want to have a comparison video between a bunch of watercolor brands, please comment down below. That'll be, that'll be cool. I'd love to review and look at some different watercolor companies and brands. And the next thing I'm going to go over is the paints themselves. You've probably already seen this in my last video, but this is my absolute favorite set. It is the Winsor & Newton 45 Half Pan Cotman set. Open it up, you have a big palette there, you have a removable palette here that isn't super inconvenient like the Sakura one. As you can see, mine's quite dirty. I like having it dirty. It makes me feel like I'm a real artist. I am a real artist, but anything helps. And I really like this set because it's a decent size. It's not like too big and it has a wide variety of colors. It has, I think, all of their Cotman colors in here. And a couple of them are repeats, which I don't really mind. That means that I can pop them out and put in a different color if I want to, which I'm actually gonna be doing in the future. In the future, I'm gonna be popping out some of these extra duplicate half pans and then popping in some different colors. And actually right now, this one, right here you can see it this one that is actually opera rose which is from the windsor and newton professional line of watercolors and i really like this color it is just so bright and so vibrant and it's just the perfect neon pink and i love it so i really like this set it's portable ish little inconvenient to put in my backpack every day to go to school and paint with it and it has a well for brushes and you can pop these out and put in new ones i've actually taped mine down so that they won't fall out which is a problem that I had. Yeah, this is my favorite set right now. I'll put information about prices and stuff in the description. Another set that is one of my favorites, but not my absolute favorite, is the Koi Sakura watercolors. Now, if you watched my review, I gave this a lower score than the Windsor Newton 45 set and the 12 half pan set, and that's because these are really opaque. I honestly don't really mind it nowadays because I like to do a lot of space paintings, and this is super useful to use on like black paper because it's still watercolor and it acts like watercolor, but it's just a little bit more 
opaque and for that I use it for quick sketches like I'll just take this to school and do tiny little sketches with it and it's super useful and as you can see I still have the palette and the lid because I really didn't like how the palette covered up everything whenever you moved it it would still cover up something little extra step I didn't really want so I modified it and that's okay it's totally fine to modify your watercolor sets and for those of you who want to see more watercolor review videos I'm actually going to be having the Van Gogh set of 12 half pans and I'm super excited to review that. Stick around, watch this channel and you'll see that review. Yeah, I love the box. I adore this box so much. You see this? It's just so cute. So that's the Koi watercolors. I also have my own custom palette and I have tubes of the watercolor. I'll go over the tubes first. So I just have a little container full of these uh, Winsor & Newton Cotman tubes because I really like this brand. What I did is that I picked out colors from the 45 set that I use a lot and so I am gradually building my own custom palette. It's not done yet. Right now I have regular, this one is this one is the deep something, this is purple, this is no, upper rose, purple rose, purple lake, this is so yeah, I really like this palette. It has a fold out little thumb holding device and it's super lightweight, super thin, and it does the job. And it holds a lot of paint in it too. You can see how big those wells are in comparison to my hand. I should use this more often. Um, those are my paints. And then next I'm gonna go over my brushes. I don't have that wide of a range of brushes but these are my absolute favorite ones to use. So um, the ones that I use the most often, I'm one of those people that rarely uses anything other than a round brush. So these are the Erect Traveler series. It came in a pack of these three and you get a one, a five, and an eight size round. And I really like these because they just fold up and then it protects the, the bristles and also makes it more portable, which I really, really like. And also when I do watercolor paintings, I usually like to ink them. So for inking, I usually use this. So what you're thinking, watercolor supply video, why do I have watercolor pencils? Well, they are watercolor colored pencils. This is the box for it, but I have made it into my little inking and sketching kit. So basically in here, I have white gel pens, the Sakura Jelly Roll ones in white. I also have some Micron pens. I have the 03, 05, and 005. A bunch of favorite Castell pens. One of my favorites is their brush pen. I actually have two of those because I like them so much and they're a lot cheaper than the Pentel brush pens. Some Copic liners in black. I have the 0 0.3, 0 0.03, 0 0.05, and 0 0.1. And also for Copic liners, these are the multi-liners. I have two gray ones that came in a sketch kit that I got. I have the brush pen and the 0.3 pen, and then I have a 0.3 in black. I really like this black one. For sketching, I have this Papermate Clear Point 0.7 millimeters, and it's pretty standard for me to use, even for school and for sketching, because it has a twistable eraser for fine details. I also have just a regular Bic pencil, 0.7 millimeters, HB number two. I also have this Click Pentel Click Eraser, which I don't use that often, but it's in my kit. I also have this pencil extender, which you can pop the pencil in here when it's this barrel is down and then you lift it back up once it's in and then it extends your pencil so you can hold it comfortably even if it's really short. And then also for highlighting, I have this Craftsmart paint pen. I mostly use this, as you can see the tip is really battered. I uh, flick it on another pen or paintbrush and it produces a splatter that I control really well. I also have the labels fallen off, but I think it's the Whiteout Squeeze pen. Yeah, this is good for big areas of white that I screwed up on. Also have this Stabilo Fine liner, I guess, and it's in a brown color. I don't know what color exactly it is. I use this for if I want to have a little bit of a softer look in my paintings. So, and for erasers, I just have a standard kneaded eraser, and then I have this Pentel polymer plastic eraser, which is really good at erasing stuff. 
So that's my sketch kit. And then for traditional inking, I have a couple things. I have Arch Pazant lettering pen. This was actually my mom's and my mom went to art school and stuff. And so she gave this to me and it's this really cool kind of ink pen where you have a well in the top and you can just drop it in. It's a really interesting shape. You can adjust how wide it is, which is super cool, and has a little cork that you can stick the tip on so you don't stab yourself, and it comes in a nice case that I have kept. So that's what I use, and I have two different handles for nibs. Uh, this one came with a set of nibs that I got because I originally had this one and just wanted to get some nibs, but at Michael's I couldn't find any nibs by themselves, so I just got a set with another extra handle. Also have this. CNF 1000. It's just a nib on a stick, basically. This I also got for my mother. I have a water dropper that I like to use for if I am needing to get a lot of water into ink or a lot of ink onto a palette. Yeah, I use this and it's just an eyedropper, totally normal. For my nibs, I have these D. Leonard and Company Birmingham ones. They came with this handle. So it has a bunch of little nibs in here. There's a wide one. There's some thinner ones, the smaller ones. I don't think I really need to go into these. Comes in a cute little case. And yeah, these are great for inking. I really like them. And I really like those handles too because they fit in my hand quite nicely. For inks, currently I have two different inks. I have the Higgins Black India waterproof ink and I have used it quite a bit and it comes with its own little eyedropper. It's not that effective but it works. It'll do in a pinch because it's nice and dark and it dries pretty quickly. It doesn't take like five days to dry which I appreciate because let's face it I'm impatient. And another ink that I got recently and I have tried to use as much as possible whenever I can is the Winsor & Newton ink in gold. Beautiful beautiful little label and right now you can see that it's actually separated a bit but if I shake it up it's just this gorgeous gold so that's all of my inking supplies for palettes i use this for both ink and sometimes watercolor if i don't know if i run out of palette space which is very unlikely but i got this one at a local art store i don't know what brand it is all i know is that it costs like 97 cents it was super cheap it's just standard plastic it has nine wells in it seven small two big and it's super useful. I also, whenever you're doing watercolor, you're gonna need something to hold your water. So that is where I have two different cups. Uh, this one is by Home. It's porcelain, oven safe, microwave safe, dishwasher safe, and it was made in China. And as you can see, I have used it a whole bunch. It is so dirty. It holds my water. It does its job. It's great. And this is my newest one, which was actually made by a friend of mine for my birthday. She made it in ceramics because she really likes making ceramics at school. Yeah, and she made it ribbed on the sides so that I can just put my brush on there. No worries. If you can, try and get a water dish that does have the ribbed edges. These are a few more things that you might need when you're watercoloring that I choose to use. So one of the tricks that I learned with using uh, masking tape instead of painter's tape is you take off a piece and before you put it down your paper, you put it on any clothing that you're wearing or any other clothing that's nearby and then you take it off and then you put it down your paper. Basically the lint will stick to the adhesive slightly but it'll still be sticky enough to go down your paper. So you put it down, you paint away, you do whatever you want with it, and then when you take it off, it won't tear. So it's a really good way to use masking tape instead of painter's tape because a lot of people already have it. They don't want to go out and buy a new roll of something when they can just use this instead. So, and then I also have masking fluid by Daler and Rowney. So basically you can put this down with a paintbrush onto your paper and then let it dry and then you can paint away and then you can rub this back off, kind of like rubber cement. Rubber cement can do the same thing but this does a lot better and yeah this is the only uh, masking fluid that I do have so I can't really say that it's better than any others but it's good enough for me and it works so just make sure that's actually really dry before you start painting or you're gonna ruin your good brushes so and have a kind of crappy brush that you can use with this okay so those are my favorite watercolor supplies and now I'm gonna talk about the ones that I recommend for beginners so if you all are beginners and you really want to get into watercolor but you don't want to totally break the bank or realize that maybe it's not for you and be totally des devastated that you bought all these supplies. So first I'm going to talk about the papers that I recommend. At the beginning I mentioned this but it's the Artist Loft watercolor pad. It's really cheap, it's actually not terrible quality, and 
it'll last you a while. And then you can always upgrade at any time to anything else that you need. Part one of my kind of beginner's set that I would recommend. And then for the actual paints, I would recommend if you're starting completely from scratch with no experience, I would recommend some Crayola washable watercolors because they're actually pretty good quality for the price. Like this whole thing was I think around $7. You get 24 colors and a brush, but the brush wasn't that good. So I would probably recommend getting your own brushes. Artist Loft ones are actually pretty good and they come in packs for around $5. So you can have these with which are a decent price and they have, they're very vibrant, but they do kind of fade over time. So if you want your stuff to last, then I would recommend the Winsor & Newton Pocket Sketchers box with uh, 12 half pans in it. I already mentioned this in one of my previous videos, which was three in one watercolor review. And so it comes with 12 colors, has its own brush that comes in it. I would recommend this for people who already have used watercolor before, but want to get something for themselves that'll last a little bit longer. Great set. If you want to see more about this set, then you can go click over here, go to my other video about this. That goes a little bit more depth. That's what I recommend. Also, one thing you're going to need when you make art in any medium is you're going to need something to sketch with. So you can just have literally any old pencil. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to work. And then I would also, some sort of waterproof pen. Sharpie permanent markers work pretty well if they do bleed a little bit and feather out on watercolor paper. So this will do for the time being, but then you can upgrade to other pens and stuff. So this is what I recommend for beginners. The um, Artist Loft watercolor paper. Winsor & Newton Sketchers Box or Crayola Watercolors, Artist Loft Brushes, just literally any old pencil, and a Sharpie Permanent Marker at Fine Point. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. And also, I have a very quick question for you all. Would you like to do a Q&A video? And if you want that, you can comment down below. I will see if there are enough people that I could do it. And also, I wanted to ask you guys if you would like to see me do the three marker challenge because I do have a couple of Copics and Prismacolors. So maybe I could film that and then it could be super duper cool because I've already done the cheap art supply challenge and now I want to do the free marker challenge for you guys. I've already done it before but I never filmed it so I'm really excited to try and film it. If you like this video please comment, subscribe, like, do whatever you want, share with your friends, share with your family. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Bye!